Hello, you unemployed messes, and welcome to this video made by this non-successful being that is myself. People thrive in money and success, I thrive in incompetence and shame. By the way, yes, I know, this show is actually a sequel, not a reboot. I won't change the name of my last video, though. The comments make the algorithm happy, I like being sneaky, yes, I'm a piece of shit. Also, remember this video by this YouTuber who claimed Hazel was a race swap TV Turner? At the time I made a short about it, only 5 rent answer videos videos were out against him. Now there's like 12. I mean, I know he fucked up, but dang, 12, that's fucking rough. Now then, if you'd like to see my review of the whole show, you can watch this video, link in description. Because today, we're gonna talk about the finale of The Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment your thoughts or what you'd like me to review next if you want. And now, let's just get into it. FBI, open up! The episode starts with Hazel about to make her millionth wish, and it took her only one season! Timmy really took his time, but oh well, cause when Wanda's magic seemed to not work, so they go to Fairy World only to be confronted to Irap, Dev, and the anti-fairies who took over, and also imprisoned all fairies. Blah 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 sad backstory, blah 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 Hazel pushed back to the human realm while Cosmo and Wanda are imprisoned too, blah 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 Cos disappeared. Oh, and Dev reveals the existence of fairies to the world. Dad is happy and proud until he starts the neglecting game again. While this happens, Hazel finally tells her friend and brother that she has fairy godparents. To which they reply, no shit, sister. Well, would you look at that? Her entourage is an Adrian aggressive level of blind. How nice! In fairy world, Cosmo and Wanda are stuck with Barry suffering from Vor Art Fate. I mean, magical backup. Basically, if fairies can't use magic for a certain amount of time, they explode to confetti. That actually was a thing in the original back in season 1, they really did their research. But then they talk to Dev, he has a change of heart, Hazel and her friends get here, they manage to save Fairy World and send the anti-fairies back to the back rooms. Dev gets his memory wiped and Hazel makes the smart decision on using her rule free wish so her friends and brother don't get the men in black treatment. And everything goes back to normal. Thank you, daddy. This episode was... Okay, I love the colors they used for Fairy World and the lighting was chef's kiss. Now, story-wise, I'll be honest, I feel like they could have used a 30 or even 45 minute format on this one. But hey, limited budget, I'm not gonna complain much. While I would have liked to see Dev and Arab take over Fairy World, I like that we went straight into action without wasting time. Now the thing is, I have one major problem with Irish Clan. And with that, I'd like to ask you all real fans of the original one thing and that is... What exactly is an anti-fairy? I mean, yeah, they're the opposite of the fairies, okay, but I feel like I'm missing some things and because of that, Irap's plan has one major flaw for me. See, it is very clear that the existence of anti-fairies is indubitably tied with their opposite fairies. When a fairy is born, an anti-fairy of themselves would appear. That's the case of all the fairies and that happened with Hazel a few episodes back. When she became an official fairy, Leza, Hazel's anti-fairy, automatically showed up. Here's the thing though, the second Hazel stopped being a fairy, Leza disappeared. Now explain this to me, what exactly happens when a fairy dies? Because like I said before, anti-fairy's existence is tied to their opposite fairies. When one is born, the other will too. So when one dies, shouldn't the other two? Because if that's the case, then Arab's plan is absolute garbage. My man's out here planning to kill all fairies with no one realizing that it will thus doom his entire race and himself. I mean, technically it's not the first time this happened. Yes, I won the case! Take that, Poof! Poof, you do realize that you're Poof's anti-fairy? Which means if he goes, you go! Of course, I may be wrong, and if that's the case, please tell me. But if not, dang, I rep grew some brain cells. We also got to see some cameos. Wandissimo, Malacosma, Big Daddy, I see you. And Anti-Cosmo and Anti-Wanda are also here. And they were pretty funny, I'll admit. What are you doing with that book, Anti-Wanda? Uh, Anti-Wanda, what are you- Though, like I said, I would have liked to have more time with them. But hey, limited Ooh. budget. The comedy was really good, I had a few chuckles. And I'm sorry, but the last fight with Irep felt kind of rushed to me. Actually, I kind of didn't like it. It... I don't know. I really feel like they could have done better here. And okay. I've put the subject on hold long enough. Let's talk about Dev. After freeing Cosmo and Wanda and giving the location of the chip, he just waits for everything to go back to normal before Drogans finally wipe his memory and take Perry from him. And now I'm torn between... He deserved it? 
and please give him a second chance. I mean, sure, he took over Fairy World and almost killed all fairies, so he deserves some kind of punishment, but first, there's the fact that he didn't know fairies could die of magical backup. And second, I feel like we should punish his father more, honestly. There was so much shit in Dave's life that I feel like a second chance is absolutely needed. Let me explain. First and foremost, he was raised by a father so neglectful he picked development to be his first name. Not only that, but he put his incredibly fucked up money driven psyche onto his son. And since Dev doesn't want to disappoint his father, he tries to be like him. His dad is so unbothered he didn't even thought of telling his lactose intolerant son the existence of non-dairy options for the nine first years of his existence. Are we serious? We can also bring up his lack of friend and social skills. My boy was bragging to Hazel in episode 1 about his friendship with Trev, only for them to never ever interact in the entirety of the show. That's Trev, he's my bud, so he probably won't give you the time of day. Bruh. He's legit lying to the new student about his social life to make himself feel important in front of her. That is truly depressing. And pathetic. So Hazel might actually be one of his first real friend. Then we have his fight with her in Birthday Take Back and Best of Luck. And I will say that while I can understand Dev's outburst, Hazel's reaction is totally justified in both instances, especially in Best of Luck. I'm even proud that she's not a pushover. Now, do I still feel bad for Dev? Absolutely. Was he being a jerk? Absolutely. Do I primarily blame his father for this? <laughs> oh, you bet I do. Seriously, Dev, what are you doing here, man? Stop that deed! Girl, while I understand your statement, think about it for a sec. You showed up a year ago, instantly made a bunch of friends, and stole the attention of his father so much he missed his birthday trying to figure you out. We're talking about a man who would make eye contact with his son only when the subject involved money. You bet this 10 year old will have an outburst. He's then, being rational is not part of his resume. Okay, maybe a little excessive, I'll admit. Now, on to Perry. And honestly, while people were feeling bad for Perry for having a horrible godkid or whatever, some people pointed out that technically Perry also wasn't the best godparent. And I kind of agree. Listen, while fairy godparents are here to grant wishes, I don't think that's their sole purpose. They are also here to serve as parental figures. I mean, Cosmo and Wanda were more parents to Timmy than his actual parents. And you can say that to all the fairy godparents you encountered in the show. Now, Perry is a fresh out of college inexperienced fairy godparent, and Dev is a neglected and unstable iPad kid. So this relationship was pretty much doomed from the start. I've also seen some people say that Perry should have had a much easier kid than Dev, and I also agree on that. Dev is a very difficult kid to manage, and having him as your first ever god kid was a very bad call. Dev up and foremost doesn't really need a wishing machine, he's already rich, technically he can get anything he wants. What he really needs is a parental figure, something that Perry didn't really fulfill, which is understandable. Like I said, he's inexperienced. Now, do I still believe in second chance? Absolutely. It could also be a really good learning adventure for the both of them, Dev having this parental figure in his life that can teach him the rights and wrongs, and Perry learning to be that parental figure, improving himself as a godparent. Then again, he wasn't done right awful at his job. He still deeply cared for Dev, even at the verge of death his first thought went towards Dev. I just want to make sure I do right by you. You're my first godkid, and I, I care about you. <laughs> I feel like if they manage to get a season 2, they should have another round, because what do you mean Dev has to forget one of the first person to ever tell him he cares about him? Come on, Jorgen! And they made this not knowing if they would have a season 2, that's freaking foul! Of course, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve punishment, he still took over Fairy World, but if Timmy, the kid who destroyed the world multiple times, froze time for over 50 years, and multiple other horrible examples could keep his fairy godparents, then Dev definitely deserved his second chance even though he did fuck up. You see why I'm torn now? Now and to the ending, and really, I don't know what to think. Well, I like the fact that Jasmine, Wynn and Anthony knows about the fairies now. I don't know, I'm kind of sceptic of what they might do with it. Yeah, I sort of changed my mind about it since the last video, I do that all the time, get used to it. The thing about this is, while I can see some interesting episodes they can make with this, they can easily mess with it in a bad way. I mean, fairies being a secret was a big part of the original in this show, and now that it's not that much of a secret, I don't know, but I'm also hopeful. Because I'll be honest, we didn't see much of Wynn and Jasmine. I mean, yes, they had their episodes, but compared to Dev or Perry, they were pretty underdeveloped. I didn't really see the striking friendship they were trying to build up with those two. So maybe their knowledge of fairies can make up for some adventures in which we can see more of them and their stories. Again, we'll see.
if we get a season two. Come on, Nick, be useful for once. Yeah, he wants to move. Let's go, 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 go. Okay, this is gonna be fun. After the finale, I went over Twitter because I wanted to see the people's reaction only to be confronted with frustrated people who desperately need a season two to survive because oh my god. Especially for Dev. People already started to theorize that he actually didn't forget and they might be into something. First, there was Wanda's statement. Baby, deep down, he remembers. Deep down. Down. And also the fact that Jorgen was wearing shades when he wiped Dev and Del's memories. Even in the original show, when he used the memory spell, he was wearing shades, meaning it protects his user from the spell. And who else was wearing shades during that scene? My boy, Warrior. Dev, of course. Honestly, I like the theory. I feel like it could actually happen, you know? So we just have to wait, I guess. Please give us a season 2. Some people also started to imagine Dev having both Perry and Irep as fairies, like with an angel and demon shoulder situation. The more fan art I saw of this, the more I was attracted to it, honestly. Even though the majority of the people imagining this are Perry Irep shippers. Perry didn't quit! He was waiting for you to call! He thought you two were on a break! And now I'm gonna talk about you, Em. I know you watch my videos, get ready, girl. So there's this person on TikTok. We started bonding after this short I met exposing people who thirst over Del Dimodome, including her. And no, it's not just for his money. I see you, you Del Sims. I'm myopic, not blind. And she made this theory that Dev is actually a clone that Del created. Why not? I mean, to back up her claim, there's the fact he named his kid Development, that they look too similar, and the major reason why people believe this theory is also the fact that none of them can believe that Dale could have actually met someone that could like him and copulate it, which honestly... Fair. There's also the theory of this person on TikTok saying that this guy is actually a clone of Timmy, but honestly I don't have the energy. Like I said, why not? Even though I don't believe in it. But why not? And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm finishing on this, don't worry. Honestly, I just hope we can get a season 2. Yeah, I know, I said this a lot, but I need it! It's a do or death situation at this point. Don't forget to like, subscribe, yada yada, and I'll see you around.